Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonin Private Wines video. We've talked about many aspects of a wine's composition here in these videos. We've talked about the color, we've talked about the acidity, we've talked about the alcohol, but we haven't covered a very distinctive aspect of wine called the tannins, of course, or what we call the phenolics, because yes, white and rosé wines have a little bit of tannins as well as we'll see. So what are those and what do they do in the wine and for the wines? Let's go. My fellow wine loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there is something that you have to know about. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership and the reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, but because they truly love the wines that they choose for you. Founded by Will Bonner, the partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. They get them. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest highest vineyards in the entire world, way up in the Andes mountains. No middlemen, no additive packed supermarket wines here, no inflated cost. Plus you'll get exclusive access to more wine education videos from me, just like the one you're about to watch, to make sure you become an educated wine connoisseur. So make sure to check out the link in the video description to see if you want to become partner in something truly special in the world of wine. But for now, back to your video. I'm not gonna get into complicated chemistry here, not gonna go too deep, don't worry, but put simply tannins are large molecules that are of the polyphenols type. That's the type of molecule that's how we call them. They are large, but they have the ability, as you can see, to stay in suspension in a liquid. Coffee has tannins, cocoa beans has, have tannins, and you can sense them there. Tea has tannins, wood is essentially full of tannins. Plants contain loads of tannins. If you bite into a fresh branch, for example, or a tough leaf, you can taste the tannins because the main characteristic of tannins is that they bind with the proteins in your mouth and give this drying feeling that is called astringency. So tannins are called tannins because they're used for tanning animal skin to make leather because of these protein binding property. Tannins are antioxidant too. They act as a protection for the plant and for the fruits. They protect against oxidation from fungi, for example, and they bind with the proteins of anything that may start eating the plants. That's why plants have tannins, and that's why grapes have tannins, to protect them in the wilderness against attacks. And that's also why tannins are quite good for you. Antioxidants, they are, and they somewhat protect your arteries, it seems, as well. But let's talk about what they specially do for a wine. So you've understood it, tannins give wine and red wine, in particular its distinctive taste, by providing this drying sensation, again called astringency. Red wine is, we say, astringent. That's how we name this sensation. It's of course also a significant part of wine and food pairing, as when you eat something fat, fatty foods like cheese will coat your palate and make the tannins feel really soft and taste smoother. As the red grapes ripen, the concentration of sugar rises in the vineyards throughout summer. The structure of those tannins in the grapes also evolves, so they get smoother and softer, less green, less harsh. That's part of the grape maturation process. That's why wines made from unripe grapes feel rougher, while wines made from fully ripened grapes are smooth and velvety. Tannins protect the wine from oxidation too. They are a big component of a wine's ability to age for long. That's why wine ages better than most beverages, especially red wines. When red wines ages, however, these already large molecules, they bind together 
chemical reactions, they also bind with the color molecules in the wine that are called the anthocyanins, and those agglomerates form even bigger molecules until they become so big that they cannot stay in suspension in the liquid anymore, and they fall, they sediment at the bottom of the bottle. That's why old wines has this dark sediment that you need to decant out before drinking. This is also why wine gets smoother with age, because the mouth drying tannins are separated from the wine with aging by sedimentation. So all the rough tannins fall down the bottom and you end up with a smooth wine. Tannins do do so much for wine, certainly a really key component and a big part of what makes wine very special in the world of drinks. But you might be thinking, Julian, you only talk about red wines here, saying tannins is what makes wine taste like wine. Well, rosé wines and white wines taste like wines, but what you may not have known is that they do have tannins, but they have much less of them. This is because tannins in wine come from the skin of the grapes and their seeds. The pulp of the fruit, and therefore the juice, itself has no tannins. So when you press the grapes without skin and the seed, a maceration prior to that, which is how whites and rosé wines are made, the wines have very little tannins because there's no contact between the skins, the seeds and the juice. Still, there's always a little tannins that sneaks in into the whites and your rosés. And you can actually taste them in those as well. They dry up the side of your palate just a little when you taste them. Some whites and rosés have more tannins than others and it makes a huge difference. Pay attention to those next time you taste a white or a rosé. You feel those phenolics, those tannins, just especially at the finish, really on the side of your palate. When tannins are in such low concentration, that's when we call them phenolics more than tannins, even though it's the same thing. They give this delicate drying sensation to whites and rosés. This is also a huge part of the expression in those types of wines. It's also what makes them more or less food friendly as well. Their food friendliness too. Phenolics. What makes wine unique and what makes it taste like nothing else is more of course than just the tannins. The fact that wine is so acidic and dry more often than not. The fact that it's fermented which is not all that common plus a few other things all contribute to making wine's flavors very special. But I hope I've demonstrated here how important the tannins alone are to wine. The food friendliness, the aging potential, the wine's smoothness or its harshness and way more all come down to the tannins. And tannins are also intimately connected to the terroir grapes are grown on. How harsh tannins are is linked to the yield of grapes in the vineyard, the type of soil, the percentage of clay for example is really reflected in the wine, essentially tannins reflect the texture of the soil somehow, very clearly. How hot and sunny a site is also is very important to the quality of the tannins and so on. Tannins are therefore a huge part of why wine tastes different in different places. Why different grapes also like the Cabernet and the Merlot taste so different because of the quality of the tannins that they have. Famously, Merlot has very smooth, velvety, silky tannins as well. All right, I think I've said the word tannins enough times for today. I'll leave it here and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Santé, cheers.